Yo, what's up everybody and welcome to another video. Today we are going to talk about three essential skills that in my opinion every data engineer should have. So let's get started. All right, here is the outline for this video so that you know what we're going to talk about. The first point that I want to make is we need to write clean code. And what I mean with that is actually that we should aim for developing small and self-contained functionality. So small units, which we are going to test. And with the testing, we make sure that our functional units are performing exactly the task they are designed for. These small and self-contained units and well-working units we compose later on in a complex program and this also adds a lot of readability in our program as we are going to see directly what the flow in our application is and i'm going to show you a small scala example as well for spark code where we are going to see how all of this helps and how it lo uh, looks like in reality the second point is we should be aiming to use the ide features which are very powerful so we are editing texts as developers all day long and therefore we should become very very efficient in doing so the point i want to make is the ide has very very powerful features and we should use them for example to navigate files quickly to refactor code or to optimize imports and finally as the third, uh, third point we are going to talk about well-engineered test cases so testing our code is very essential also from the first point we had um, and therefore we should also account for some time to develop our tests appropriately so that we can add tests easily later on now only code which is tested i consider high quality code because only code which, uh, which has tests can be changed easily later on to the project, which is one of the essential requirements for high quality code, in my opinion. And also as we develop small tests with minimal test data to test only the logic we are aiming for, and um, we also add some documentation what the code is supposed to do. And these three things I wanted to show you in a live coding example now so that you can understand what I mean with these. All right, I have prepared a small Spark program as an example. And what we do is basically we instantiate a Spark session, which we're going to execute locally here. And then we have a main method within our Scala object here for this video course, uh, for this video, um, where we are going to load a data frame from a ZSV file and then rename the columns and then we are doing some yeah, business logic on top of that. So here we are actually um, finding the days within a year. So we're actually dealing with stock data, which is of the, um, of the company Apple. And it has an opening and close price for each of the days. So very simple data. And in our business logic, in a sense, <clears throat> we are basically finding the days with the highest closing price within a year. So essentially we're grouping data by the year and then find the day with the highest closing price. And we also have a tiebreaker here. So if there are two days with identical closing prices, we take the one with the lowest opening price. And finally, we write the result to an out directory with the symbol as the name for the parquet file, which was yeah, named incorrectly here. All right, so uh, as you may recall, we wanted to write clean code. And as you can see, this is more like what we call spaghetti code. First, we're loading data, then we're renaming columns, then we're applying our business logic, and then we're writing our result out to a file, which is not testable as at all. And we also, I had to use a lot of words to describe what's happening here. And we needed to yeah, look at this entire code to see uh, to understand what's going on. Now, what we want to do is to transform this spaghetti code into nicely readable code by using principle one to refactor things into small units. And secondly, to use our IDE features, which is principle two. So the first thing we could do is we are using the symbol name here twice. It's once here and once when we write data. 
So we can refactor that into a variable or a configuration for our program. So what I could do is basically refactor this one into a new variable. And therefore I press Command, Alt and V for refactoring a new variable. And here it asks me what I would like to refactor. And actually I would only replace the apple, which is, which is the symbol for the stock. And it already suggests me to replace both occurrences of this. So I, I select this one and then I simply call it a uh, symbol. And this will be used here once and once down here when we write the parquet file. Hey, and sorry for interrupting your learning, but if you would like to become a pro level data engineer, I would like to point you towards my individual coaching product. Now within 12 weeks, I would take you from no prior knowledge in Apache Spark to a professional skill set, which will make you the expert in your development team. You can check it out at academy.philip-bronenberg.de and you can also find the link in the show notes. Also, please subscribe to this channel if you like these videos. Now, let's get back to the topic. Now, the second thing we can do is to take all of that code, which is basically related to loading the data from a CSV file and refactor it into a new method. And therefore, I press Command, Alt and M in IntelliJ. And I, it asks me in, at which scope I would like to introduce a new method for this. And I would like to have it directly within our Scala object. Now we can assign it a name, for example, load stock data. And it always suggests me to have one parameter, which is going to be the symbol, which is of this type string, which basically tells our application which stock data we would like to load. And here we can also specify the result type and if I hit OK now, we have refactored all of that code into one method. And the nice thing about methods or introducing new methods is that we can as assign a name, the function name or the method name, to a yeah, piece of code, which and the name should describe what the code is doing. So for example, in our case, it's load stock data. And within there, we use the Spark um, from the outer scope um, load the CSV um, file with the name of the symbol we've specified. Then we are renaming the columns and then we're returning a new data frame, which is our return type of this method here. Additionally, we could also refactor this piece of code, which is our business logic into a new method, Command, Alt and M, and then we can yeah define a name for our code snippet here. And we are going to call it um, so it's producing the highest closing prices per year or something like that. And we also specify the parameter. We have to pass in a data frame and we would also like to specify the result type. And now we can see that we have a new method, which we're calling here, which is called highest closing price per year. It takes a data frame and here it has inferred a data set of row as being the result type but we would like to have a data, which is simply a type definition for being a data set of type row. Now this method is called within our um, main method. And here it has also used the data set of row, which is quite ugly and we don't want to have it like this. So I would replace this one with the, t uh, the type data frame. And the result is of type data frame and is produced by calling the method highest closing prices per year with parameter of the data frame, which we have loaded previously. All right, and finally, we can do the same for this code snippet here, which is responsible for writing our result to the respective directory. So we refactor it into a method and we call it write result. And it takes two parameters. One is the symbol name and the second one being the data frame, which is the result. The symbol name, we need, we need to assemble the path of the output directory. All right, so now finally we write the result for that symbol using the result we have created or produced with our method here. And within the right result, nothing much is going on. But you can see within our main method, we have a very nice and concise description of what our application is doing. So we know we are loading stock data for a particular symbol. Then we are transforming this one 
into being the whole uh, the highest closing prices per year and then we are writing the result so it's very nicely readable and that's what i wanted to show you we have also used the ide features and that's how a workflow could look like finally we have some unused import here you can see it in this line here so they are yeah you, you can see they are a little bit gray so they are unused so if i hit um control alt and o will optimize the imports so they have been removed the key bindings might be different in other ides or in your own key map but that's also a very helpful ide feature all right let's go ahead and talk about the third principle which is to write or to engineer your unit tests correctly now what i've done here is i have created a test class for our functionality that we have um, implemented before and in here we want to test the units in particular we want to test the unit which produces the highest closing prices per year now what we do is we instantiate a spark session in here and define a struct or a schema for the test data we want to use and we are only going to instantiate the test data which we use in our functionality which is the date the open and the close price the other fields are not important for our test case in this case and i've also implemented a test here already um, which basically tests whether the highest closing price is actually returned for each of the years now we instantiate test data which is quite small but we have three rows um, two of them being of of the year 2023 and one of them being of the year 2022 and we also define the expected result now what our test case is supposed to do is we are, in, we are creating the data frame or a data set from the test rows and then we would like to call our unit so in our case this would be three essential skills and then we call our unit which is private at the moment so we will have to set this one here to public so that we can call it from the test package public is not a modifier in, in scala but we just remove the private and it will be available here so we can call highest closing prices per year and we pass in the test data frame this will give us the actual rows actually it will give us a data frame so what we do is we collect these into a scala list so that we can compare them within our test case now this test case checks whether our business functionality is implemented correctly and i said before that this test case will add documentation because i can read these five lines here and i know what will be the expected result so in here we have two years um once the closing price is three and once the closing price is two for 2023 and we know we're expecting the row which has the closing price three but that's only one test so if we added another test so we can copy this entire thing add it here um, and then have the second one to test something slightly different and we want to give this test case a descriptive name and here we want to test that the ordering is also correct so the high highest closing price with lowest opening price is returned Op opening price is returned so the reader already gets an idea what we want to test here and for example we have in 2023 we might have or in 2022 we might have the um, situation that we have two dates in january where the closing price is identical but on the 13th 13th the opening price was two and on the 12th the opening price was one so in our respected re expected result for 2022 we want to see the 12th of january with an opening price of two and a closing price of four and we have now a new situation simply by reproducing the test case from before and this would already be a working example so the only thing we have to do to introduce a new test case is to specify the input and the expected output rows so that makes it quite easy to yeah add new test cases one thing we can do also is to refactor these two lines of code which are 
um, reused in both of our test cases into a new method, which we can call, for example, create test data frame. And it takes a sequence of rows and produces a data frame. And here I don't want to specify the result type because it was wrong before. So here we don't want to have a data set of row, which it would infer here, but rather a data frame. So we can use this method now and we have to import data frame. So this will be used here and also in our other test case here, which it hasn't done. I clicked it away, unfortunately. So what we can say is we don't need this one, but rather we say the test DF is create test data frame of the test rows. So we use it here and 18 lines below, we can remove this type annotation here. And now we have quite clean test cases. Yeah, and these are the three essential skills I wanted to show you because I believe they are neglected way too often in the practice of data engineering and developing Spark applications, but they make quite a large difference in your working style. So thanks for tuning in and see you in the next video. Bye-bye.